Good day, teachers! This lesson video is for our second type of curriculum model, which is called High Scope or the Cognitive Oriented Curriculum. From the name itself, Cognitive Oriented Curriculum, you might already have an idea about what this curriculum model is. But I want you to continue watching this lesson video so that you will learn more details about this type of curriculum model for young children. Now, let's take a look at the history of the high scope or cognitive-oriented curriculum. This curriculum model was advocated or proposed by David Wakehart and his associates, like the Ferry Elementary School principal Charles Eugene Beatty in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The Ferry Preschool Project studied the impact of high-quality early education on 123 black children with risk factors of failing in school. Hence, Dr. Wickard went on to establish the what he called as the High Scope Educational Research Foundation way back 1970 as an independent, non-profit organization to continue the work of the Perry Preschool Project, which is already now called as the Perry Preschool Study, and developed the high scope curricula. In 1971, the high scope demonstration preschool opened its doors to three and four year olds in the Ypsilanti community. And on that, the same year, 1971, High School published the Cognitively Oriented Curriculum, its first manual for the high school preschool curriculum. To this date, the demonstration preschool serves three and five year old learners in a full day program. That's the history of this curriculum model. Now let's proceed to what is the philosophy or what are the principles and goals of the high scope curriculum model or the cognitively oriented curriculum from the word cognitive this program is based on piaget's intellectual or cognitive development theory so high scope provides broad realistic educational experiences for children which are focused to their current stages of development in order to promote the constructive processes of learning necessary to broaden emerging intellectual and social skills. This curriculum model is based on fundamental principles, which are the following. First, active participation of children in choosing, organizing, and evaluating learning activities. In this type of curriculum model, children are able to exercise their own simple decision-making skills because they are allowed to choose, organize, and evaluate their learning activities, their preferred learning activities for a specific day. But of course, this doesn't mean that children are left alone. Of course, the teacher in this curriculum model will continue to guide them, discuss with the children regarding their choices of activities for the day. There will always be teachers' careful observation and guidance in the learning environment which is replete or full of variety of materials found in various classroom learning centers. So like the first curriculum model which we have discussed, the Bank Street Developmental Interaction Approach, this type of curriculum model also makes use of classroom learning centers or learning areas or work areas because again they consider giving children the choice to choose their own activities for the day 
so you can imagine that their classroom is divided into various learning activities or learning areas which are of course composed of different multifunctional learning materials for exploration. Second fundamental principle, regular daily planning by the teaching staff which is aligned with a developmentally based curriculum model and careful child observations. This type of curriculum model teachers highlight the highlights the importance of planning, being prepared because Remember that this curriculum model makes use of various learning centers in the classroom. And so, it's important really for the teachers or the teaching staff as a whole to plan for the learning activities, the specific learning materials that are to be placed in each of the learning center. This curriculum model does not only bombard the children with with varied materials to engage in but of course these learning materials with complete or rich number of learning materials of course serve a specific purpose they are not just placed there for uh, the purpose of consuming the time of children to make children busy no that's not the point later we will find out why the third fundamental principle for this curriculum model is that developmentally sequenced goals and materials for children based on the high scope key experiences so i'd like to bring your attention to these two words developmentally sequenced this means to say that they expose children to activities that are in line with their current developmental levels now if we say developmental levels these are referring to the current abilities the current capacities of children going back to the first topic that we had in module one we have learned about developmentally appropriate practice and one principle that was actually discussed in that lesson is the importance of getting to know your learners getting to know their current abilities and knowledge so that you as their teachers will be able to understand on what appropriate materials and activities are necessary to be provided to them so there will always be purpose and the activities are presented from simple to complex because whatever skills that they will learn in a specific activity will actually serve as scaffolds for the children to do the subsequent activities all right this type of curriculum model aims to develop a broad range of skills like problem solving interpersonal communication skills and others that are very important for successful living in a changing society they don't just focus it's not because that the name of the curriculum is cognitive oriented curriculum this does not only focus on the development of the cognitive domain okay just to be clear in addition high scope curriculum will or the curriculum focus which we will be discussing later on includes active learning so when you say active learning like the first curriculum model that we have discussed the bank street interaction model this type of curriculum model the high school or the cognitive oriented curriculum also underscores the importance of active learning hence it means that children are continually exposed to hands-on experiences concrete experiences that that helps them to make use of various skills aside from active learning classroom arrangement also considering that this curriculum model makes use of 
varied learning areas or learning centers or work centers in teaching children different skills and concepts. Then they also have daily schedule and then they do assessment and of course they have a curriculum that suits every developmental level of the child in the class. Let's proceed to the beliefs of children or the beliefs about children and how they learn. Now, what are the beliefs of the high school curriculum as to how children learn? This curriculum model believes that children are the source of their own learning. Hence, they learn by doing and being actively involved in working with ideas, people, and materials. So, if you can remember, the first curriculum model that we have discussed has actually emphasized also the importance of learning by doing because the Bank Street model was inspired by John Dewey's approach, learning by doing. This curriculum model also, the high scope model, although it was inspired by the cognitive development theory of Piaget, they also believe, this high scope curriculum model also believes that children also learn by doing or by meaningful experiences, hands-on experiences. And uh, dealing or collaborating with people and materials. That's why their learning centers or work areas are full of various learning materials. Let's proceed to the curriculum focus. What is the focus of their curriculum in the high school? This curriculum encourages children's initiative by providing children with materials, equipment, and time to pursue activities they choose. This type of curriculum model fosters children's initiative because they provide, they set up the environment, they set up the specific learning centers inside the classroom, of course, rich with materials, different materials that serve its own purpose. And they provide children time to work on with these materials. And they also allow children to choose their activities, their own activities or the learning centers that they prefer to work on for a specific time or for that specific day. This curriculum also provides teachers a framework for guiding children's independent activities toward sequence learning goals. So, by providing various learning centers and materials, children are able to exercise independence because in the first place they are given the opportunity to choose what they like to do what they like to work on for a specific time and for a specific day this curriculum also includes children's interests in the curriculum which is of course patterned with the constructive approach or constructivist approach and implements the philosophies of Dewey and Piaget. All right. So this curriculum considers the children's interests, what children would like to learn about. Hence, in their curriculum, they also ask about children's curiosities and teachers design activities, sets up the environment, prepares the materials that match the children's interest. So isn't it amazing? All right, let's continue. The curriculum focus for the high school or the cognitive, cognitively oriented curriculum comes from two sources. What are these sources? Earlier, I just mentioned the first. First source of their curriculum focus, children's interests. So in their curriculum, they incorporate what children would like to know in their activities. 
and another source key experiences and these key experiences have a list of observable learning behaviors what are these key learning experiences the high scope is famous of their eight key learning experiences what are these let's talk about them one by one the key learning experiences in high school curriculum are the following first in the list is we have the creative representation what are the specific behaviors or learning behaviors under this first key experience which is the creative representation first recognizing objects by sight sound touch taste and smell so you see one of the activities that they have in creative representation is on allowing children to make use of their various senses considering that they'd like children to make use of their sight sound touch taste and smell Another activity under creative representation is imitating actions and sounds. Like for example, the teacher will show specific actions like jumping, walking, clapping, and many more. And the children will be asked to do the same. Another also is imitating sounds which will come from objects in the environment or vehicles or uh, animals in the environment another is relating models pictures and photographs to real places and things and another also is pretending and role playing like they act like a mom or a dad or they act like a policeman or a police woman or they act like their sibling or they act like a specific animal that they like so that actually depends on the children's wide and rich imagination another two activities under creative representation are making models out of clay blocks and other materials i know that you have also in a way ask your learners to do this in the class because almost i think no children young children are exposed to activities like molding out of clay no building and stocking up blocks and other materials and of course we also have drawing and painting under creative representation and I'd like also to highlight that this creative representation activities do not only foster the child's curiosity, imagination, and creativity, but these outputs, the outputs that will be taken from these various activities under creative representation will also serve as important basis for the teacher to understand the child more like for example in drawing and painting do you know that the emotions of children are represented in the types of strokes or drawings that they have or even the types of colors either bright or dark colors that they use so if we are not sensitive enough as a teacher, we might not be able to understand the child, what the child is feeling at the moment, how the child is doing. So as teachers, it's important for us to take a look at sample students' outputs because these drawings and paintings might be telling you something. And if you are not sensitive enough, you might overlook some important information about the child and that will actually not help you to understand the child some more another key experience is the language and literacy like we have here specific learning behaviors that the high school curriculum has identified first in the list 
talking with others about personally meaningful experiences. Like as a teacher, do you talk to your children during recess times or even when they arrive at school or when they are waiting for their parents or guardians to fetch them? Do you do that at school? Do you talk to them about many topics like their favorite pet, uh, the activities that they did during weekends because these are not so formal activities but are very important because this promotes language skills and of course literacy in particular oral literacy or communicational literacy another activity here is describing objects events and relations like you're going to show a specific object to the child and you're going to let the child describe it by highlighting some attributes like the size, the color, the colors, the shape, and many other things. Or you can also include the texture if you will ask the child to touch the object. Third activity, having fun with language. How do children have fun with language? So they listen to stories and poems, diba? Right? They make up stories and rhymes. So even when you ask children to recite rhymes, finger plays, and short poems in your class, you are actually helping them to have fun with language, to love language out of doing these activities. Another here is writing in various ways like drawing or scribbling you no know, with no definite direction at all letter like forms invented spelling because especially for young children they don't really know yet the correct spelling of certain words so they invent spelling that's part of their growth do not wonder why they are doing that and of course the conventional forms Last two activities for language and literacy, reading also, if, we, if they have writing in various ways, they also have reading in various ways. How? Reading storybooks or just by looking at signs and symbols in the environment or in your classroom if you have signs and symbols. They also read their own writing and of course dictating stories. So those are for language and literacy. Another key experience, which is the third in the high school curriculum, is initiative and social relations. Specific activities under these are making and expressing choices, plans, and decisions. Again, this is very consistent to what we have been talking about earlier. The children are given the opportunity to choose and make their own plans. So, that is why one of their key experiences is on making and expressing their choices, plans, and decisions. They also have solving problems encountered in play, taking care of one's own needs because again, as much as we want to take care of the kids, we should not overdo that or else they will become overly dependent to us and we don't want that to happen. We take care of the children's needs but of course, we also strike a balance between doing some things for them and letting them do things on their own, of course, with our guidance and supervision so that they will learn how to be independent. Another activity is expressing feelings in words. No, this is very important because some kids throw tantrums, nanunga tantrums man, because they don't exactly know yet how to express their needs through words. That is why ang uban mag throw of tantrums, mag wild, and some of them will show aggressive behaviors and wanted behaviors and our role as early childhood educators is to teach them how to express what they want through the use of appropriate words not through aggression another activity is participating in group routines ah, 
Another also is being sensitive to the feelings, interests, and needs of others. So this one has something to do with social emotional development. So you see, even if this curriculum model is named as cognitively oriented curriculum, this doesn't not really mean that it's only focused on developing the cognitive domain. Because as you can see, one of the key experiences in initiative and social relations has something to do with teaching children how to be sensitive with the feelings and interests and needs of others, specifically his or her classmates or peers. Another social-emotional activity also is building relationships with children and adults. And how do we do this? How do we build relationships? We don't just use words to build relationships. We provide various activities for children to work on, to engage in, so that while doing these various activities, they will learn uh, important relationship skills like taking turns. No? This is very challenging, especially for young children, how to take turns. How to make negotiations. Like, for example, they learn how to negotiate to exchange toys after a, sp a specific period of time. Or uh, they learn also to take turns by like for example if the child is playing with a stuffed toy and the another and the other child is playing with blocks they can actually negotiate with each other that they can exchange their learning materials when they want to so as a teacher you should be there to guide this process you shouldn't leave them no unattended another activities two last activities for initiative and social relations are creating and experiencing collaborative play so this is again something to do with social emotional development children are taught how to collaborate with other people specifically classmates and friends but in a form of play so that they will they will learn collaboration skills but they are enjoying at the same time and the last activity for initiative and social relations is dealing with social conflict that is why it's important for kids to be guided by adults teachers and parents but if we are talking about the classroom setting it's important and it's really necessary for the teacher not to leave the children especially young children unattended because of course they are still learning and there might some skills that need to be strengthened or improved like some of them might not be able to take turns no dili pa sila kabalo mag take turns that's why they will end up arguing over a specific toy or a specific learning material and they don't understand yet the concept of taking turns so as an early childhood teacher you should be there to watch over them and should there be conflicts between and among young children always be ready to process this and help children identify solutions not impose your own solution okay later i will be discussing the six step process of solving conflicts based on the high school curriculum watch out for that another key experience is classification and the specific activities under these are exploring and describing similarities differences and attributes of things like you can ask children to group objects according to color according to shape according to size according to texture or according to number another here is distinguishing and describing shapes and then sorting and matching using and describing something in several ways by of course uh, highlighting the use of attributes like describing an object through the use of color, the use of size, weight, or texture, and many more. Then, under classification, specific learning behaviors that they also expect from learners are distinguishing between some and all. The concept of some 
and all and then describing characteristics that something does not possess or what class does it belong to another key experience is seriation and we have three specific learning behaviors under this first here is comparing attributes like the concept of longer or shorter bigger and smaller so as a teacher you might have several uh, activities like for example you might have a group of sticks a group of sticks with different sizes or and then you can ask the kids to arrange these sticks from shortest to tallest or tallest to shortest or you can have several sizes of balls and then you will ask the the children to seriate or do seriation by arranging the balls from the smallest size to the biggest ball or you can ask the children to seriate the balls according to color or according to size and many more Another activity for seriation, arranging several things one after another in a series or following a pattern and describing the relationships like big, bigger, biggest, red, blue, red, blue. That depends on what, what pattern you'd like to have. And last activity for seriation, pairing one ordered set of objects to another through trial and error. Like, for example, uh, small cup, small saucer, and then medium cup or saucer, and then big cup, and then big saucer. So, you can do that. Another key experience is number. All right. There are also three activities under these. We have comparing the numbers of things in two sets to determine more, fewer, or there, there are only same number of items in a group. Arranging two sets of objects in one-to-one -one correspondence. So what is one-to-one -one correspondence? One-to-one -one correspondence is the idea that numbers correspond to specific quantities. Like for example, you are playing a game and the child is counting one, two, three, four, five using a die. And after counting one to five, the child also jumps one, two, three, four, five on the board because five dots correspond to five jumps. Or for example, when we also talk about one-to-one -one correspondence, you will roll, you will ask the child to roll a die. And for example, the die shows three dots so three dots correspond to three clubs one two three so that is an example of one-to-one -one correspondence making children understand that a certain number corresponds to a specific quantity next activity for number is of course this is one of the favorite activities of young children counting objects all right, we're down to the second to the last key experience for the high school curriculum, and that is space, okay? The idea or concept of space. Activities for space include filling and emptying, like you can have a water pitcher and a glass. You can ask children to fill the water pitcher and then fill in different sizes of glasses or cups. That could be one activity and there are many more. Another activity, fitting things together and taking them apart like puzzles. You, arrange, you ask the children to arrange the puzzles and then take them apart and then put them together again and you do and the process goes on. Another is changing the shape and arrangement of objects like uh, doing wrapping, twisting, stretching, stacking, and closing. Another, observing people, places, and things from different spatial viewpoints. 
And we also have experiencing and describing positions, directions, and distances in the play space, building, and neighborhood. And the last first space is interpreting spatial relations in drawings, pictures, and photographs. And the last key experience for the high school curriculum is time. And what are the specific learning behaviors for time? These are the following, starting and stopping an action on signal. Like you ask the children to just jump in place. And then you tell them that when you clap once, that means stop. So you ask them to jump in the place or on the place. And then when you clap once, you expect children to stop. So that could be one activity. Another, experiencing and describing rates of movement. So slow, fast, very fast, or very slow. Next is experiencing and comparing time intervals, like um, the interval of 5 minutes, or 10 minutes, or 15 minutes, and some more. Last for time is anticipating, remembering, and describing sequence of events. Actually, we commonly do this, especially when we do storytelling. We ask children to remember the sequence of events like what happened first, second, third, and so on. What happened first, in the middle, and the last. That is an example of sequencing events. So we're done with the curriculum focus. It's time for us to discuss the roles of the teacher in the high school curriculum. What are some of their roles? First in the list, arrange the environment. So like the Bank Street model, this curriculum model also asks teachers to prepare the environment. Because remember, they adhere to the principle also of learning by doing. Hence, it is the role of the teacher to set up or prepare the environment and the materials in it so that the teacher can facilitate discovery and exploration and, of course, active learning. Next, select the center's activities and appropriate developmentally appropriate materials. Because if you can remember, this curriculum model is using different learning areas, work centers, and job areas to teach knowledge or information or concepts or skills. And so the role of the teacher here is to think properly what materials should be placed in a specific learning corner or area that will, of course, be appropriate to the developmental level of the child. You cannot place a material that is too simple or too difficult for the child to handle. That is why it's really important for you to understand your learners well so that you can also know what type of materials you think they would need for the exploration. Again, the materials are based on the following. The selection of the materials are based on children's interests, opportunities for facilitating active involvement in numbers, relation, time relations, classifications. Remember the following. These are the, the concepts no? promoted based on their key experiences curriculum. Teachers also encourage children to adopt an active problem-solving approach to learning because we want to promote this curriculum model wants their learners to have problem-solving skills. Another role of the teacher is to facilitate. So like the Bank Street model, the role of the teacher is only a facilitator. Here in the high school curriculum, Teacher facilitates teacher-child interaction to help learners achieve developmentally sequenced goals. So when you say facilitate teacher-child interaction, you don't just leave the child to do various activities that he or she likes. As a teacher, you are there observing how the child is interacting with the materials or with the peers. And of course, you need to approach the child if necessary so that you can promote a conversation about what the child is doing currently. And then, of course, you can insert little input or discussion about what the child is doing, what type of activity the child is engaged in. 
The teacher keeps notes about significant behavior, statements, changes, and other information that help to understand the learner better. Observes children and keep notes form and a portfolio describing the child's key experiences. If you remember, the bank straight model also highlights the role of the teacher in observation and reflection. So like the bank straight model, this high school curriculum model also gives value to the teachers being active in observing children while they are engaging in various activities and while observing kids or children doing various sorts of activities the teacher also is keeping notes or recording some important information that could be used as basis to redesign the activities for the learners and of course another important role of the teacher is to um plan for each child and review activities with children because remember children are given the opportunity to plan for what they want to do but of course the teacher is there to discuss with the child if these plans also are realistic and possible to be done within the day and the last role is lead small and large group active learning activities. All right, so let's proceed to the roles of the learner. What is the role of the learner? Makes plans for the day and carry out these plans. And of course, they review their plans, whether they have been successful in the plans that they have set for the day. And of course, this will be with the guidance of the teacher. What are the roles of the parents? They come in every two weeks to see what the child is doing and sometimes they do the activities if, if they have time, in, in some cases only, but not all parents do this. They promote family involvement through a partnership approach to the child's care and education. We can say that the role of the parents in the high school curriculum is also very active because they get to visit their children at school and see for themselves how their children are doing and aside from that they also have open communication with the teachers of their child with the school of the children so they continually exchange information so that they can also help each other and support each other in terms of helping the child learn they also have curriculum-based workshops. And what are these for? They are used to support families so that the families can support children's development at home. This is also like the Bank Street model, wherein the role of the parents also is to strengthen whatever activities that the child is doing at school in their homes. Now, let's proceed to the daily schedule. Of course, the schedule considers developmental levels of children and they incorporate a 60 to 70 minute plan do review process. And then their daily routine is made up of a plan, do, and review sequences. And this provides learners the opportunities, of course, to express what they want to do for the day. And then let's proceed to the five processes which support the daily routine in the high school curriculum. Number one is the planning time. Of course, this is the time where the child expresses what he wants to do for the day, what learning centers he or she would like to be engaged in. And during this process, the teacher talks with the children about the plans that the children have made for themselves before the children do the activities. So I'd like to clarify that in the planning time, even though the children decides, decide on their own on what they want to do, this doesn't mean that the teacher will also immediately 100% allow them to do this. Of course, the teacher will also check what activities the child would like to do and should there be modifications of course the teacher will provide some suggestions doing this will help the children to clarify their ideas and suggest ways to strengthen their plans and become successful number two key experiences 
So teachers plan from key experiences. Of course, the activities that they have in the various learning centers are also consistent with the eight key experiences, the curriculum focus of the high school. Because the activities in the classroom are not just activities that are out of nowhere, no? These activities that are set up in different various learning centers are aligned with the eight key experiences of high school, the ones that we have discussed earlier. All right, next is work time. So this is the longest period in the plan, do, review sequence because this is the time where the children carry out their plans. They do their plans for the day. And so the teacher is always here ready to enter in children's activities if possible so that they will be able to encourage or extend help when necessary and of course to propose or to help children in solving some situations especially if the children will encounter some problems another is the clean up time of course children are taught how to be responsible you know how to be independent in this way, children return materials and equipment to their labeled places. So like the Bank Street, they also have storage spaces with labels so that children can return or get the materials themselves within reach. No, They can actually return the materials on their own because there are labels available. And the last is recall time. This is now the final phase of the plan do review sequence this is the time when the children represent their work time experience in a variety of developmentally appropriate ways hence in this recall time children might recall the names of the children that they have uh, worked with or they can draw a picture they can describe the problems that they have encountered or they can recall the strategies that they use when they encountered some problems and then of course the role of the teacher is to support the children by linking the actual work to what they have originally planned so ang role na dayon sa teacher is to let the, the to guide the child to realize whether the child was successful in doing the task that he or she has planned at the beginning of the day all right following a consistent routine day after day gives the children a sense of security hence each high school program decides on the daily routine that works best for its setting schedule and population the following components that are presented to you are very important parts of their routine however there could be variations or differences from one high school program in a specific country to another so wala gave definite you no know, although these are only inspirations or common components found but then again each high school school or curriculum has the freedom to make some variations provided that these variations are very very beneficial to children okay we also have the daily routine components. The plan do review sequence again is composed of planning time, work time, and re recall time. This three-part sequence is unique to the high school curriculum. It includes a 10 to 15 minute period during which children plan what they want to do for the day. And then a 40 to 60 minute work time. Imagine how long their work time is so that they can really have ample time to do what they want to do based on their plans. And then another 10 to 15 minute for reviewing and recalling with an adult or a teacher and another child what they have done and learned for the day based on their plans. They also have small group time. So, here, the children meet with an adult or a teacher to experiment with materials. They try out new skills and solve problems. And the teachers also develop a small group activity that is based on the children's interests and particular skills and materials or content areas. 
They also have large group time. So this is composed or participated by up to 20 children. And there will be two adults or two teachers or one teacher and teacher aide or assistant will come to assist for movement and music activities, interactive storytelling, and other shared experiences. They also have outside time. At least 30 minutes of their, their daily schedule is spent in outdoor activities and then transition times. This is now the activities on how the, the children will transfer from one activity to another. This is a very important part of the daily schedule so that the, the children will remain focused on the activities that they want to do and so, and so that they will not be distracted. They also have eating and resting times. They have meals and snacks and of course they are they are given time to rest. They also have adult team planning time. Just imagine that. So the teaching team which may compose of the teacher, the assistant and some other adults will discuss their observations of children's developing abilities and interests and they do the adult planning time when the children are doing nap time or rest time or before the children arrive at school or after the children leave. Of course, they cannot do the planning time when the children are very busy because some accidents may happen and the teachers are not around. This is an example of daily routine for this column here. This is the half-day program. You can just read this. And then this is the full-day program. For the learning environment of the high school curriculum, classroom is actually arranged in various centers or work areas with a range of very interesting materials. They organize their storage spaces with labels. It is stimulating but orderly. No, There are a lot of materials pero arranged in Japan because there are different uh, storage with labels. The classroom organization of materials and equipment supports the daily routine where children know how to find the materials and what materials they can use. And this really promotes self-direction and self-independence. They focus on real materials like dishes, tools. They don't use toy versions. They base on the work or interest areas or centers. And I have here a sample of their floor plan or classroom setup. So what can you say about their classrooms? Definitely, it's true to the description that it is stimulating, attractive, and colorful, and that as you can see, it's very organized. Another sample here. So you can see they really have storage spaces, so they facilitate really self-independence or self-direction because children can get the materials and return the materials on their own as well. And the last would be the additional features for this curriculum. All right, what are these? First, children's planning efforts are central or of importance in this curriculum model. So they value children's planning efforts because again, going back to the discussion earlier, they do the plan, do, review process. They allow the children to make their own plans for the day. But of course, the teacher is there to guide the children whether these plans are possible to be done within the day or not. The high scope, this is the last, follows a six-step process should there be conflict. So they, they follow a six-step process for resolving conflicts. And what is the first step? The first step is approach the situation calmly. You have to calm yourself as a teacher. And should there be kids who are crying or saying hurtful language, you should also calm them first, make them relax first before you start actually asking them what happened. Second step, acknowledge children's feelings. Don't question why they feel that way. Just listen to them. Next is gather information. This is now the time where you ask children what happened. You have to make sure to listen to both sides. Do not take sides. Ayaw paglaban-laban. Be fair. Alright? 
Next is restate the problem. This is by emphasizing to the children what both of them want to do. Why they ended up quarreling or arguing. You help them understand the situation. Why they end they ended up arguing over something. So you process the whole situation. And then the the next step. The fifth step is you ask for ideas for solutions and choose one together. You don't impose the solution, diba? Right? Usually, this is a common mistake of teachers. Teachers will ask the children to say, Oh, Juan, you say sorry to Pedro. Pedro, you say sorry to Juan. That shouldn't be the case, okay? In solving conflicts, if we follow the high school curriculum, the teacher asks, possible solutions from the children themselves. You help them think to solve their own problems. And then from the from the suggestions that they have given, you help them decide on which of this solution will be helpful to both of them. Para win-win situation. Okay. And the last step is be prepared to give follow-up support because maybe you have already chosen the solution to be done to address the problem but maybe when you turn your back nagkagubot na sad silang duha so you have to provide follow up whether the children were able to successfully solve the problem using the agreed solution so that's it that's the end of our lesson video for the high school curriculum model or the cognitively oriented curriculum i hope that you have learned important details about this curriculum model and if you have questions i always tell you do not hesitate to ask questions always approach your trainer and that's me if you have questions feel free to post them in the comment section of our Q&A section in our Facebook group. That's it, teachers. Have a nice day. Goodbye.